Ed versus Loka, the championship round. Winner of this taking home $30 and moving into the semi-pro bracket. This uh, this will be interesting. Ed's looking really tough right now. Uh, let's throw up a new prediction, guys, and we will get right into this championship match. <laughs> I think Ed hustled us, man. He purposefully got stomped last month so that I'd move him down a division. Oh, uh, so how does one move up or down from a division exactly? It's mostly decisive gameplay within, like, the winner automatically goes up. Usually it's like, I mean, not every loser in a division goes down, but it's usually like, I don't know, if you kind of get beat pretty good in a division, you go down and stuff like that. Um, so it's not like set in stone. We also have players that kind of play both because sometimes we need players. So like this month we had a few players, I think we had two or three people play from D4 into D3. So it's just tricky. You know, I'm really just trying to encourage competitive matches. And, uh, you know, so having multiple divisions, obviously, to try to separate skill levels. But a little easier said than done with a, a modded game mode that people are less familiar with. Okay, okay. Loka... Loka, another player I'm, I haven't gotten the scouting report on just yet. So uh, these are honestly uh, my favorite kind of players to uh, to watch play. Just good players I haven't seen before. Always a treat. Cause they always, they always, uh, you know, everyone has their own little flair, you know, their own style. Yeah, and and uh, and Loka, that's a good word for it. He definitely does, and it's going to be hard to see here. You know, we guys. If you guys saw Loka's first match today or some of his other games, like we talked about, he's a showman. Uh, some really wacky stuff. He's pulling lots of lots of random stuff out of his bag of tricks. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see here if a player like Ed, with Ed playing so well today, if he's able just to kind of shut it down, um, uh, you know, like what we just saw with him do to BR. Um, obviously, Ed just kind of playing on another level right now. Um, so, so we are in the championship round now. It was only four people, so single elimination. Uh, Loka did beat Cold in a decisive, well, not decisive. It came down to game five. It was a great uh, prelim game. Um, so Loka did win that game, but Ed crushed his way through his prelim game, just going 3-0. So Ed with the momentum right now, coming off that first win. But Loka, uh, Loka does have the advantage. He was just in the stream watching this, watching Ed. Um, let's see what he can bring here. We are going to see Loka with a little bit more of a conservative build. you got to imagine Ed's coming right at him. Here come the conscripts. <laughs> yeah. I, I, this is a pretty good opening because there's just so many garrisons that, you know, if it's stopped, you can at least bunker up and make use out of these conscripts immediately for control. So I feel like this is, I mean, maybe he's, he's going a little overboard with the conscripts here, but... Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yep. I think there could be a funny meme, like an Ed meme, where it's like five conscripts and it's like Ed being normal, and then like ten, you're like Ed trying to be silly, and then it's like forty, you're like Ed being super. Like he like does, he has three different conscript openings. A lot of people I feel like are either all or none, and Ed has like three or four variations of his conscript openings. Uh, but we usually see some come out, and this is a relatively large variation. And Loka gonna come right at him here, uh, in range of that bunker, in range of a sentry gun. <laughs> gonna find much good, good trade that's a good trade for look i mean uh you got one of ed's uh tanks down to yellow bar and oh, he no has longer a good trade for him Ooh, and throws <laughs> throws a rhino Oops. as well yeah i mean baiting those early sentry guns can be nice i mean it's gonna throw off uh, ed's economy a little bit baits three sentry guns but then you got to minimize the damage to your own tanks in the process and uh ed's ed's could be looking to push you with these conscripts Using these bunkers throughout the map, I love that. Yeah. Wherever the new battle is, he takes the huts. I like that. Loka is fine, I think, at the moment. Um, obviously, his, his position is worse. Uh, Ed has control over the map with the garrisons and <clears throat> the additional war, but uh, totally playable here. But I don't know if he can attack right now. No, no, and I think Loka... Um... I, Loka, he seems like one of those kind of players where when he thinks he's a little bit down on chips, he wants to try to send it. Um, he wants to try to make something happen. I think you saw that super early kind of push from him. And he th you kind of see him like he, he doesn't want to sit back against Ed. But at the same time, Ed's not really giving him any openings to push. Nice dogs out front to try to clear out those conscripts. Well played. Runs over the conscripts. Pulls back to the sentry gun. Nice. Yeah, Ed baiting him in there a little bit. Uh, Tesla Trooper getting some value here. Yeah, father, that Tesla actually. Trooper doing work. Damn. 
Um, so, Ed, uh, I'm surprised that there hasn't been more prioritization to get these crates. Yeah, the crates are, they're relatively low, uh, relatively low value, and I think people just kind of get distracted or don't think about them, but... Uh, our base is under attack. Unit lost. <laughs> the sirens are going on. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think he's, um, the both players are just, there's higher priorities right now than the crates. Yep, and those... Loka is just trying to stay alive. I think he has enough infrastructure to stay in this game, but he's just so out tanked and the conscripts are coming. Ed is coming. Yep, and you see, and uh, Ed did force a war factory cell with four conscripts on the bottom right. That was a nice little... I like this. I don't know if four Base conscripts... Go, 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 go. He's got to go. He's got to fully commit to this. Yeah. Mm, I think he should have fully committed. I don't see... He might have been able to kill that oil derrick next to his war and simply just go up on war count and take and then try to bounce back from there, but uh, I, I, just, I feel like he's got nothing here. Yep. It's just It's just all yellow. It's all Ed... The fake, fake D1, boys. The fake, fake D1. Ed hustling us. Yeah, and um, and and Loka, you got to imagine um, the scouting report on Ed. Uh, Loka's got to be looking to get some desolators in the game, and now a desolator out too little too late. Um, these conscripts are causing a lot of issues. They're kind of Ed's bread and butter right now, although he certainly has the build and the tanks to support him. But uh, desolators are really what you need. Definitely some adjustments for sure. Um, I feel like you got to open up with more conscripts. Uh, maybe, maybe you could. Maybe Ed overdoes it a little bit, but um, <laughs> you got to garrison a decent chunk of these structures, or else um, they're, they're, they're just gonna, not going to have any map control at all. Yep, yep, yeah. You don't. You definitely want to want to let Ed take all the huts. Um, I, you got to imagine, but Ed's also kind of funny. Like we'll see. All of a sudden, now next game, you build four bunkers and an early ra radar with five desos, and then Ed sits uh, back and goes Kirov. So um, Ed does a good job keeping players on their toes, and that's the best way to be playing a game like this is to uh, mix and match. You know, don't be predictable, um, but certainly at the same time, you can't get can't get ran down on uh, by conscripts again. All right. Um... Loka trying to keep the fingers as warm as possible here, trying to make as much gameplay time as possible for game yeah. two. Never terrible, never terrible idea here. Uh, um, wait, are we, are we on point one or two? Uh, this is point one. This is the first point, right? This is right? game one, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yep, now Ed rolling through. Yeah, it's, it is tricky, though, because it's kind of annoying. I mean... It's tempting to be like, you got a bunker and bring the desos. But like I just said, then it's tricky because then Ed doesn't do that. Now you got all this extra stuff early on, throws off your economy. Um, but Ed's looking very, very tough right now. Um, very, very tough. And I, I don't know if you uh, have, like, I know you said that you played chess, but uh, have you heard of the, the chess player, Macal Tall, for Macal example? Tall, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. He's, he's basically like an elite player. Everybody, you know, if, yeah. if you look into it, you'll, you'll hear his name. Uh, I was going to compare Ed to Macau Tall of RA2. So, oh. <laughs> uh, Loka, you know, he, he's up against a monster here. Um, Ready up. <laughs> As you talk. He's, he's up against uh, a, just a monster. Um, and that was just destruction. <laughs> it was, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to think of. Uh, what he could have done differently. I mean, he's he's got to get the, the gar. You got to get the garrisons. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do so. You got to. You, you. He needs to. He needs to slow down the potential conscript uh, rush or the conscript action early on without committing in a way that throws him off completely off his game. If that doesn't bring him, I guess. I mean, but it's uh it's gonna be absolutely tough. I mean, Ed's just dismantling people in Division One right now. Um, and obviously a lot of people are gonna say Ivor, of course, Ed should be semi pro. But the last two months, like I said, guys, Ed didn't show up. So at the same time, it's bittersweet when you have a mismatch like this in a division because at one point it's like, oh, Ed shouldn't be in D1. But at the same time, now I'm excited to see Ed uh, show up here next week in semi pro, mm -hmm. take on some of these guys like Zed and Artie and see if he can hang with them uh, the way he was a few months ago until just recently. So bittersweet moment here as Ed again comes out with the conscripts. Quick shout out to Pharaoh of NY supporter of the youtube channel i appreciate it man i appreciate it thanks for hanging out i'm glad you made it over to twitch it's much more much more fun over here see i'm talking directly to you a lot more fun all right frank what do we know what do we know talk to me well ed doesn't have any tanks right now and he has not garrisoned 
Okay, well, you garrison a couple small huts. This is... I don't, I'm not liking the position for Ed. Uh, I think Loco should just play this aggressively here. And he's doing exactly that. Oh, does it get in range of that hut? I don't like... Okay, just storms the hut. It's one option. It's Makes all Loco right now here, boys. It's all Loco's head. Uh, Ed is on the back foot here. This could be his death. Ooh. He's not careful. And so Loka, could Loka be bringing some infantry in? A bit of mismanagement. I mean, at this point, with Ed's base so spread out, it's tempting to, uh, it's tempting to drive away from the sentry guns and not battle them and just make him bait them throughout his base till he goes broke, then pick off buildings? Or do you think it is the move to be targeting the sentry guns early on like that? Uh, I mean, I think he got a good trade there. Um, he should have just backed up and, and, yeah. was, and was just satisfied with the opening, try to garrison more huts and just try to expand his lead. I still think he has a nice little juicy lead here right now. Um, he just needs to maintain that lead and stretch it. He needs to be, at this point of the game, it's like, all right, well, what do I, this is official middle game territory right now. What's next? Your options are radar, multi-war, or straight B-lab. Um, yeah. I mean, the left side is, you know, we got battle bunkers over here. You, you can't do a direct assault, so it's going to be it's become the right side. The left side is closed right now. This is an excellent trade. Yep. Ed, Loka. Ed's, Ed's conscript's a little late to the battle. Loka targeting those tanks should probably... He's hungry. Yep, yep. Loka's coming. Oh, and the two, two elite conscripts. Yeah. yeah. And now we... Oh, the crazy Ivan on the top left. Oh, I missed no. it. I missed it. Oh, man. That is... How much damage is that? Will it take an MCB? Nah, 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 nah. Okay, all right. Yeah, so not so bad then. Um, now, and, and, and Ed, Ed's conscripts on the top side. Locus sending it on the bottom left here. What's going on? Loka, oh. he's coming, boys. Here he comes, boys. But the perfect, the perfect desolators from Ed and um, thins out that attack. MCB? He's gonna die for it. If he gets the MCV, he wins. He, he moves it! Oh my god, is he? Oh, he oh. almost gets away with it. Does lose the MCV. But these conscripts, a lot of conscripts on the top side. No desolator from Loka to thin out these conscripts, but he's running them over nicely. And Ed, you see Ed scattering those elite conscripts doing work. He's got three elite conscripts. <laughs> oh, Ed is getting so much value out of those conscripts. I love it. Now Ed up in the top left with his rounds, trying to make something happen. Um, Ed just trying to confuse Loka right now because Loka just needs to hold on. Loka has the MCV. Ed's on one war factory and one barracks, desoing his own barracks in the bottom right. Loka just needs to not blunder here. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a, uh, some sort of weird miracle here. At this point, you're, you're thinking, all right, I'm just going to spam sentry guns. Just spam them. Just all of the sentry, 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 yep. sentry, 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 sentry. Sip your tea. Make sure your tea is stirred with some honey, some ginger spice. Because yep. you can just make this as slow and painful as you want, because uh, Ed has no MCB. One yep. War. Yep. You just gotta uh, make sure you don't blunder, neutralize, collect yourself, and then um, and then drop the hammer, whether it be by tech, naval, sheer rhinos. There's about eight different ways to do it. It all starts with not blundering. He's pumping the desos, defending himself, not gonna make any mistakes here. Um, and it, and uh, Loka put on a show for us here. Um, very close point there. Yeah, second war, that should be check and mate there. Two war production is, yeah, this is a com pra practically a completely unplayable position here for Ed. It's, uh, Loka's on the board. Yep. Right in the books, boys. Yeah, and Loka, um, we saw it in his, in his game to get in here. Uh, he was, he won two matches with backdoor MCV snipes. And I really like Loka's ability to be looking down the field, uh, looking for those openings and making really good calculated decisions, uh, albeit yeah. a bit risky in situations, but he's made it happen. He's got behind enemy lines and taken out three MCVs today, and that's how he's won a lot of games, and um, yeah, it's well played. Yeah, you can kind of tell from the first game, too. Like, uh, he was outplayed, but uh, he was he was active. Like, he, was, he was looking for openings, right? He was, he was making plays. Um, yep. And that's, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't win games by... I'm sitting around. <laughs> right? No, nope, no, nope. especially not against a player like Ed. Uh, you got to yeah. be, you got to be looking to make something happen quick, and uh, that brings us to one-one. And you, yeah, you love to see it here in the championship. Um, <laughs> you got two players in here who are both, I mean, crazy Ivans and and uh, a lot of fun stuff right now. Um, love it. All right, one-one, going on to uh, point number three here.
Uh, Brian, yeah, Brian doesn't really play in tournaments and stuff very much. Doesn't really do show matches and stuff. Um, it's kind of one of those things, too, where it's like, why doesn't Brian come play? It's like, Brian's got his own YouTube channel. It's like, why would he come fart around on my channel and play Blitz? Why when wouldn't he, could, he either? When he could do his own YouTube channel, make fat ah. stacks with all of his cool, uh, with all of his cool followers, you know? Can't blame him. Can't blame him. All right. Point number three. Point number three here. Um... And Ed, and Ed with a very conservative build. Look at this build from Ed. He's not stretching. First time we've seen him all day. Yeah, we have ourselves a series here, boys. It's it's all tied up here, one one, um, as the underdog, making a name, showing up here with the flashy tactics, giving Ed a taste of his own medicine, and we're all eyes are on Loka right now. Can he take this down and move up? Can he have this huge upset? Because you take him down, Ed. I mean, you got to... I'm, I'm rooting for him. I, I, I yep. don't want to be too biased, but I'm rooting for him at this point here. The performance... At the, he's... Yep. He's right now. Um, oh. Got a... Uh, lag. Bit of lag here. Yeah, I think... Well, I mean, people on YouTube say that a lot. They're like, why are you cheering for that guy? I'm like... I mean, you guys follow the thread. I only cheer for one person. It's the underdog every single time. I'm always cheering for the underdog. I have never been like, yeah, I can't wait to see Ed 3-0 in the championship. Obviously. Come on. <laughs> like, yeah. Always cheering for the underdog. And you know what was interesting about that last point, though, is that Ed didn't really make any blunders. I mean, not necessarily, not, you know, like, or Ed, I mean, Ed played pretty good, to be fair. I mean, obviously some mistakes were made, but which is pretty satisfying because when you, you know, when you get a win and it's like, oh, I, I kind of got lucky or whatever the case, that last point, I mean, you, I don't know. You, I mean, you, Loka, Loka, Loka won a good point that last time. Definitely proved he could, uh, he could hang with him here, but does he have the stamina to make it happen over the course of the series? We'll see. Yeah, he's slightly behind here, um, about three fourths of an oil in terms of time. Uh, and I do, uh, the wall on the MCU here by Ed is pretty interesting. Uh, Loka has, is running into some eco problems right now. Only, f okay, so, a two, let's get three, four, five, a heavy split here. I can't even keep track of this. This is a good trade for, for Loka here. Yeah, I like this. Just... I like this from Loka. And Ed... This is a huge war factory kill here, guys. That's his only war, boys. Yep, and that's going to, and if he can pull out here, yep, uh, and he will. That's going to put Ed... Ed behind on tanks. Ed does get his, another War Factory out right there, but we'll put him slightly behind on, on tanks. And it was interesting to see Ed walled off, put a bunker, put a sentry, but then he put buildings outside of that little defensive area, put that oil and that the power street. there. Another nice hit. He's just going to have to stack as many tanks as he needs to get this MCV kill. Oh. He has to get this MCV kill. And Ed and, and Loka gets a taste of his own medicine here. He's been leading on the day with the MCV snipes and allows himself to fall susceptible to it. He does get five engineers, yeah, which is hilarious. He lost. I think Loka clearly wins this game here. Yep. Uh, this yep. is going to, I mean, it's holdable. This Desso is the most cost efficient unit in the game here. Desso's out, and Ed's going to put his own tanks behind the radiation, try to save them. Loka's going to go out, find a little refuge in that back corner. Um, the wall's slowing him down a little bit. Oh my god. Loka. Loka's not gonna. Does he get the oh, MCV? Loka, Loka, Loka. Oh. <laughs> the hero Desso's coming through in the end there, boys. But we got reinforcements coming in here. He's got to make sure he kills this veteran tank. Uh, he, he doesn't make it. There's no way to get through this radiation. There's no way to do this. He needs a drone. Well, there is a will, there is a way, boys. That pretty important oil goes down. He's forced to pull out now. And All right, so he's going to need some drones, right? Can, yeah, he needs. Three wars to one. This is still within Wait. his grasp. There's just a lot of death. Well, I think these oils here near near the war factory are the target, Ivor. I know, but he can't. There's too much. There's so many deaths everywhere, yeah. Wait, where are the drones? Oh. Wait, can he build drones? Wait, can you build? Oh, yeah. I was like thinking, does he need a radar? I'm like, I never play. I forget these things. So now the drones <laughs> way late to the party. He's got to. Oh, God. And again on the radiation. I mean, you can try to drive past. You can't just go sit on it and try to. Okay, now that drone's cleaning it's up. Huge drone. That drone just killed him, almost all the deaths there. It, again, it's still three war factories versus one. Ed is just tucked into a corner. This is still a winning game for Loka right now. He's got plenty of money in the bank. Yep, he's got three war factories and plenty of money here, but he needs to be careful and make some really, really good decisions here. Um, Deso's coming now. <laughs> 
Loka, Loka bringing an engineer. A bit of lag, very unfortunate here in the championship. Hello, my game. friends. <laughs> IX AQQ. Every oil kill helps. I mean, Ed, Ed is down to. Th okay, he's got four oils again. It, it looks like Ed's going to be able to hold this out and win. He's got qu quite a few rhinos here. One of them vet as well. Yep, yep, yeah. He's he's stockpiling the rhinos, keeping them off the radiation. Um, and Loka, the clock is ticking. His window of opportunity closing pretty quickly here. Try to dive on that oil. Should take the ooh, take the Deso with it. Oh, that oil went down with the fight. Now Ed on the right side. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty, uh... Yeah, and you know, it's one of those things where when the Desos don't work, it's so often that you see a player a little bit too late. And Ed did a great job there. When things started going south for him, he had the Desos already out. The moment he needed to switch to Desos, he did it. Um, and yeah. he was able to defend it well. Very, very close. Yeah. Could have lost that I mean, MCD. Ed, Ed, Ed was in a really, really difficult spot there. He probably, I think you could argue he was in a losing position. Yeah. Um, but he did, he found the one open. He just went straight to the MCV. And it was a risky play, but it's all he had. And he sacrificed almost his entire army for that kill. And honestly, I think what won him the game was that slam. Slippery maneuver down at the bottom that I think most of us missed, where he just managed to save like four of his rhinos when they all should have died. And if Loka got that MCV counter kill, it would have been the easiest win conversion of his life, but there just right. wasn't quite enough rhinos uh, for it because Ed managed to save a couple. Ah. The little thing is good. Yep, interesting. Yep. But Loka's low power, right? So. Ooh, it's, yep. uh, it's, it's over. Yep, not much to do with 24k when you're low power here. <laughs> These oil kills, Ivor. This oil kill will kill. Oh my god, this oil kill. Oh my god, this oil kill. He needs to, he needs to get Come this on. Kill. His, the one rhino isn't shooting the oil. Oh, he got it. couple he rhinos. Got it. Couple rhinos missing, missing their assignments there. But even if he takes that, it's like, yeah. I, I mean, what do you do with this many? I mean, in retrospect, that probably was the target the whole time before the MCV. It just, it just... Yeah. But, I mean, that's in, that's in retrospect. I think his target prioritization was correct in the situation, right? He, he tried to kill all of Ed's Rhinos first, then get the MCV kill. I, I would, I think, I would have done the exact same thing. I'm impressed. That was a very high-level game. Yeah. Man, these, these little these spikes of lag. Very, uh, very yeah. depressing. But it's nice, it's coming and going. We're not getting the persistent lag. So, Ed. We've heard no complaints whatsoever, so. <laughs> yep. Although I found right. that the uh, the complaints tend to be about more about the players than the actual conditions. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there could be no lag and the right players might complain. There could be a ton of lag <laughs> and, like, Ed and players like Ed yeah. and Legend never say anything anyway. All right. Uh, so, Ed does. That's true. Ed does take that one home. Um, oh, yeah, we had the no timer map on. Should have been a timer. Okay, now we know. Um, yeah, IXAQQWW in the house. Yeah, we got Frank in here. Frank the man himself. Uh, the championship round here. Okay, so it is 2-1 for Ed. So, Loka fighting to stay in the game. Uh, Ed looking to try to end things here. If Ed can win it, he will take home the prize. Loka trying to extend things. Wants to bring us to game number five, which is obviously what the people want. Definitely uh, fully capable. Um, definitely uh, a player to look out for in the upcoming near future. Yeah, yeah, playing playing some uh, and really making making Ed work for it there. But yeah, it's funny these uh, you know the MCV swings are so interesting because it's so minor. It's so it's it can be just a, the littlest difference one way or another whether or not you get an MCV on a dive, and then the game just tilts so heavily from there. You know, right, right. Uh, you go from a very even game, also an MCV dive, boom, that's completely out of it there. But um, it, like you said, it was the it was the move from Ed. He saw the opening and uh, great decision making. Right. So many tiny things added together. I mean, he, if he didn't wall his MCV, he walled his MCV to start, right? Like that saved uh, his fucking MCV that's true. in the game. Yeah, if he wouldn't have had to break through those walls, he yeah. would have lost it. <laughs> so in retrospect, maybe the MCV was not the right target there, I guess. Uh, yeah. But it was so close. 
You know, it's difficult. You know, you have obviously players, top level players and traditional Red Alert 2, you're used to being in a base and picking targets and trying to judge value. Um, the oils just add this massive variable where, you know, it might, the oil might be, you know, there's, there's just, you have to, as you're going through the enemy's base in the heat of gunfire, you have to try to decide, like, will that oil chain react to that? Is that oil the target? Um, it just adds that another, a lot of complications to uh, that last minute kind of uh, heat of the moment thinking. Forces you to spread your base out. So. And it does, and it, and it forces you, and that's what I like about it too, is that it, it punishes the campers. Um, it does punish you for turtling. Um, tank, tank battle. It takes it. It punishes you, but if you're slick enough, you can you can try it, and, and it's possible to pull it off. But um, it's just easier to be the aggressor. Um, yeah. But these these guys, man, they'll they'll throw that counter attack at you, and they'll they'll get that MCV snipe. I really like what Ed is playing. On, I I don't think I've seen him play this way before. Wall in the MCV, sentry gun, battle bunker, a bunch of conscripts next to his MCV. Who is this guy? <laughs> and I like it. He's evolving in real time. Um, and that's what, you know, that's what obviously the style of Blitz being on the same map for a whole series. It's meant to uh, have your tactics have to be forced to change uh, game to game. And uh, Ed's, Ed's evolved a little bit and he's realized Loka wants to attack the backside. So he's got a sentry and a bunker, a couple bunkers. Um, and I guess Ed must be comfortable with his macro here, his, his, his overall build. He doesn't feel the need to go recklessly shoving in. He thinks, let's, let's protect our MCV, let's, uh, you know, and bring out tech maybe here. I don't and know. Ed sees some juicy, juicy targets over here on the left side of the map for this crazy Ivan that he now has in the flak track. We're going to have to keep oh, a close God. eye on that, baby. F for follow, F for follow, F for follow. <laughs> Crazy Ivan out, yeah, and those oils could get a nice chain reaction if he hits the middle one here. We'll see if Loke is able to uh, counter it. He's got to kill this. Oop. He has to kill that. Should, He's going to get the B-Lab. Going to get the battle lab. That is unfortunate. Hey, like a doodle! I'll take it. Pretty lucky. I mean, I, I guess it was perfect. The battle lab kill was the the play there. I mean, Loka recognizes the situation exactly, though. He sees that Ed is bunkering up. Instead of playing super aggressive like every other game, he decided to go straight into radar, straight into battle lab, get map control, get the crates, and so on. So adaptive, adaptive player as well, apparently. I really, yeah, I really like that move from Loka. As soon as you see a, your opponent putting up walls, tucking into their corner. Uh, you got to go tech and uh, and try to make them pay for it. In this case, try to get the naval, get a dreadnought. A lot of oils in Ed's base that would be pretty juicy right now if you could get in. That's not the point to attack from. Loka sends a couple tanks right into the death triangle topside. Another crazy Ivan? Where? Oh, my God. Oh, oh my yeah. God. That's, what, two, three oils and a power plant? Oh, my God. Devastating, devastating. But he does have the battle lab. We're going to see a dreadnought here in a second. And this is the first game of the day where Loka has come into minute four with money. So Loka does have money, he does have the battle lab, and he, where's the Dreadnought? He's it's always... just uh, being constructed in low power, so there oh, it is. Oh, low power. And, uh, uh -oh. and no, no flag Go. right now. He's got a minute, he's got a minute to pick the targets. Oh! Target. And he picks the perfect target there. Yep, the perfect target. And I'm really surprised that Ed let that happen without more of a fight. I mean, Ed did not see that coming. We haven't seen I much Naval Ed today, man. but Ed was not ready for that. Driver, they sneak up on <laughs> Yep. It's like, all right, everything's looking good. No. No, it's not. Wow. No, it is not. Yep. Wow. And Loka, like we said, ladies and gentlemen, he's a showman, so he does need to sync up all those Dreadnoughts now as the flat comes out. Um, He's a bit out tanked here. He needs to be careful. Loco just wants to extend this. He wants the dreadnoughts to keep working. So he's got some desolators. Throw those out. Slow things down. Now, Ed, the, this map, you can counter the naval from the land. And Ed could have gone in and tried to hit the naval yard. He could be trying to hit the dreadnoughts. But at this point, Ed's just trying to look. Is there a way for Ed to get tricky? He's looking for a trick play. He's looking for a Hail Mary. And I don't think there is one. Yeah, I love the Boris edition as well. Just really good versus Rhino tanks. Um, just keeping it in the back. I mean, he's got a full base, Ivor. Iron Curtain is ready, and yep. it's a tied series. Ed calls GG, and that brings us to point number five. And um, what a wacky... Uh... Uh... Oh, Ed. Oh, and Ed says he didn't have the Navy scouted. And that's why Ed got caught with his pants down looking like that. Didn't scout the water. Uh, all you aspiring boys and girls who want to be pros someday, remember that. Scout the water on the Oasis map. He should have kept that to himself because <laughs> now we all know 
every time you play this map in the opening, you need to scout all around that water to make sure you can <laughs> see. <laughs> yep. That's why the flak wasn't ready. He, he did not see the naval yard in the middle. Didn't think of that. Yep, yep, yep. That is absolutely right. Jerky Hunter, Chintas, 333. Oh, I didn't thank you guys for the follow. You guys already left. That was 30 minutes ago. Damn it. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Thanks for the follow. Stu Mandu, 77, first time chat. Thanks for hanging out, man. We are in for a treat. We're all in for a treat as we move in to point number five here. This is it. It is best of five. Uh, both these guys putting on a show. Both these guys hungry. Uh, both been playing some great blitz here. What do you think? What do you think? Oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Okay, so we'll put Ed. Ed was in the top left. Uh, we're, so we're switching over to the no timer map for game number five here. Ed in the top left, Loka in the bottom right. Okay, so to answer your question, if I'm Ed, um, I got to stop trying to play fancy and... I got to try to stop making things up as I go. And I got to just play how I play, which is relentless Neanderthal aggression. <laughs> Chest hair out, caveman style. That's what he's got. That's what he should do. Make, make Luca beat you. Um, Cause you know, haven't played the map enough to like be too comfortable with these fancy smancy strategies yet. I don't think. Um, so I, I think we should ex expecting to see Ed like super super aggressive, and at, at the level these guys are playing, I think Loka should be thinking that's coming. Yep. Um, so yep. Yep. I think all I think... eyes right now for me are on Loka right now. Yep, I think that's absolutely right. I think Ed, um, you know, he got he's I think he kind of had some momentum. He had a, he had a lead in the series, and he got a little more comfortable trying to mix things up. And uh, and like we've talked about, Ed's our entertainment is is a priority for Ed as well. And I think as it comes down to game number five, he's thinking, where did the series go? Uh, and you like you just said, you got to boil it down. I love that Ed's got to get the chest hair out, um, run and gun, and make something happen here. And so Loka spreads out. Loka this time spreading out and grabbing uh, three ramps of huts. Head out now with the drone to counter these uh, anti-scout a little bit here. It is funny, though, when you saw that Navy come out last point and just destroy Ed. You're just kind of like, it was like a glitch in the Matrix. You're like, wait, what just happened? And that did make sense. He didn't have it scouted. Yeah. Uh, ooh, that drone gets into Loka without. Yeah, pretty even so far. Loka, pretty similar build, a little bit more conservative in his corner, and we do see Ed stretching himself out. Okay, so I'm just looking to see what building Loka puts down next. Huh. Elite Connie. Oh. He building right now. Loka has a huge tank lead, boys, and the, he's coming for the win. And he's got the conscripts here, and he's given Ed a taste of his own medicine. He does have the conscripts, but like he decides it. to go right into these sentry guns. He's got plenty of tanks for it, but I think he could have maybe continued his push on the bomb side. Going to hit a power plant here. That elite conscript, keeping trying to keep that elite. He's got to back up. Yep. He's got to back. He's got to get out of here. Too aggressive, over aggressive here. I. And Ed's. It looks like Ed's going to take this. Let's see how Ed. Tries to take advantage of his wow. advantage. <laughs> wow, and and Loka, yeah, and we've seen it. I, you know, I've been tempting to say it. We've been seeing it all day from Loka. He's a little bit too um, willing to engage sentry guns uh, early game. I, I, honestly, I, I thought he played really well. Um, I, I, the tactical retreat going back, I thought was the right play. Yeah. Um, sliding in, getting the. Uh, and the sentry gun kills, I thought were the right play. And then he should have just backed up, I guess, and maintained his... He had just had way more tanks than Ed. He had a really good trade there. He should have just backed up, maintained his tank advantage, kept it from there, then reconsider how he should transition in the middle of the game with the edge. But instead, he, he got greedy. He wanted that power plant, too. Yep. And uh, that is a mistake I've made so many times. Like, <laughs> right, I'm just going to get that one more kill before I get out and just have a juicy lead. But got punished there. It yep. happens. Great series there. Yeah, great series, great series, and and yeah, it is one of those things too. Where obviously much easier said than done from up here. You know, in the heat of the moment, you <laughs> want true. those targets, and and at the same time, it's one of those things where if you don't, I mean, Loka's made his way. Loka's the kind of player where 
he he does bite off a little bit more than he can chew. And even if it only works <laughs> less than 50% of the time, you know, the times it does work, that's where he gets his advantages. He did win his, he, he got a lot of wins today over exerting himself and doing things that I would have questioned. So when it came down to it, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But in that case, uh, well played from Ed, played it straight up, used those sentries, defended, counterpunched, took it home. Great match. I'm looking, looking forward to see, uh, I mean, Ed manages to prevail. Um, so the, pr pr the favorite prevails this time, but we will be seeing Loka again. We, <laughs> Loka, yep, lives to fight another day with our entertainment in mind. Great series, great tournament.